It's a false alarm. Couldn't you try? So I was a bit disappointed for my sake. Tina, you know the score. If you were pregnant, I would have stood by you and the baby. You've been straight with me. You made your feelings perfectly clear before you did the test. Now it's my turn to be straight. Hand on heart. I think it's for the best. Well, I feel like I've lost our baby. But you weren't pregnant. Not I thought I was, Peter. I have been pregnant before. Yeah. I know. And there's all sorts of stuff wrapped up in it. That has nothing to do with me and you. I mean, we never talked about having a baby, did we? I mean, we didn't plan it. No, we didn't plan anything. This would have made things more simple. Because you would have had to let you go. Unless you were going to keep that a secret as well. Tina, this, this is all hypothetical. No, because now you're going to carry on stringing me along. No. I'm not. I've behaved irresponsibly, I know that. But maybe this is a wake-up call. Tina, I'm a terrible dad. I am. I wasn't even there for the first five years of Sai's life. He lived with my ex-wife. It'd be different for us. No. Look, I know the timing was lousy, but can't you picture us as a family one day? I'm nearly 50. I failed at being a dad once. Why would I want to put another kid through that? You haven't put Simon through anything. I'm, I'm an alcoholic. OK, that, that's a lifelong condition. Peter, you've got it under control, all right? I yeah, don't... you've had your problems, fine. But you can face it. We can face them together. No. What we need to face is the inevitable. Don't say that. Peter, don't say that. <laughs> I'm holding you, you back. You are not holding I me back. I'm holding no, you're not. you back if you want kids. Yeah, all right. OK, yeah, one day am I, but I'm in no rush. No, but I've been there <laughs> and I've done it. And I know, Tina, that I can't make the sacrifices parents <laughs> need to make. Because do you know what? I'm selfish. I'm too selfish. We won't selfish. We will have any then. I'm, we won't have any. No, you can't make them kind of sacrifices. <laughs> Look at me. Because you won't feel complete until you're a mother. <laughs> Look how disappointed you were earlier. Tina, I feel that I have to respect that. I'm not the right person for you. You need to be with somebody who can give you what you need. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that this is over. <laughs> Can't believe you're saying all this. You are an amazing, beautiful, wonderful woman. But, Tina, we are not going anywhere. We're not. All right, OK, we had, we had a pregnancy scare, OK? I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Can't we just go back to how things were? Okay, I promise I'll be more careful, Peter. Just I listen. promise. Just listen to me. <laughs> you have so much potential. You can do anything you want with your life instead of wasting it on somebody like me. I want me. to be with you. I don't. I don't care about anything else. I know. I know. Okay. And I want to be with you. <laughs> but in the long run, it just. Can't work. Of course it can. It can't. I always.
was so flattered that you even gave me a second glance. But when I stop being selfish for a second and I think about what's right for you... You're right for me. No, you need yes. to... No, I'm not. You need to be with somebody your own age. Oh, I don't care about the age difference, no, Peter. All right, and I didn't either. But, you know, this pregnancy scare, we're at different stages in our life. I don't care. I'm sorry I have to let you go. <laughs> don't. Yes. Please, Peter, yes. don't do this to me, please. No matter how much we both want it, it can't happen. <laughs> and I think deep down you know that I'm right. Carla could be back any second. <laughs> I'm sorry. All the flat because of you. I feel like standing on the bar and saying it's him that's a drunken bum, not me. I mean, imagine what she'd do if she found out the truth. She'd go flipping spare. Yeah, but she's not going to find out, is she, Steve? You know, and that's all thanks to you. Listen, mate, I, I owe you one, you know? Any little misdemeanor, romantic tangle, just holler, I'll be there for you. All oh, right, so I get like a little chitty, do I? I can, I can just pull it out every time I need an alibi. Anything you want, mate, really, you save my bacon. Yes, and in the process, landed myself right in it so I would like, like a proper IOU, please, you know, signed and everything. <laughs> if that's what you want, I will pay you back, mate, I promise. Yeah, come on, come on. <coughs> Even I wouldn't get myself into this kind of mess. Yeah, but we got away with it, didn't we? Oh, we hope. And just for the record, I don't want any part of this anymore. In the way of responsibility you've put on my no, show. No, I'm sorry, mate, but things have changed on that front. I don't want to know. Tina. I don't want to know. Isn't, she isn't. Pregnant. And also, I told her I can't see her anymore. When? Just now. I said to her, you know, I'm holding you back. And I need to set her free. She bought that? Didn't yeah, you? she did. I know. Don't. Well, Tina ain't pregnant, but Carla is. So I think it's glaringly obvious what I need to do. Well, yeah. Listen, don't fall off the wagon. Either wagon. You managed to get a kit? Yeah, I still feel a bit rough. B and B was horrible. It's like a war zone. Be good practice when this baby comes. <laughs> yeah? Do I look like a fella that's going to do night feeds? Night mm -hmm. feeds? Oh, Peter, I've not even thought about that. Is it too late to change your mind? I'll do me bit. Are you still sure? Yeah, of course I am. I'm going to dote on this baby almost as much as I dote on its mum. Mm. Why do you keep asking? Do I? Yeah, you, you keep asking. Well, do you know what? Messing with me head, I suppose. If you're sure, I'm sure. I am. I, f I feel really positive about the future. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's good. In that case, I wonder if I can ask you a little favour. Yeah, OK, go on. Why should I subsidise somebody else's failing business? Tell me that. Um, Because 
Most businesses need to be cut a bit of slack from time to time, and, you know, they are family. So that means they don't have to pay rent? What do they do, just, just pocket the profits? I don't think there are a lot of profits, baby. No, exactly. They need putting out the misery. <sighs> that shop is like a battered pigeon that's bounced oh. off a car hey, no. on it and it's hopping it's about on the road. Cut them a bit of slack. I know, could you ask the Inland Revenue to cut us a bit of slack next time they want the tax? Or ask the girls at the factory, can you just oh, cut us a bit of slack because right, it's you payday? Do, you've made your point. And also, why are they asking you about the rent on my shop? Well, because they just wanted me to put in a good word for them. I'm the landlord, Carla, right? I call the shots. <sighs> the rent. Pay up or get out. Well, the thing is, Peter, we just need a little a bit, bit of more an open hand, yeah? Yourself. You'd know about that, Peter. I'll let you have the place six months rent-free. Sooner or later, the chill wind of reality's got to blow under your door, like you'd know. Some brother you are. Start paying rent or find alternative premises. Is that understood? I tried. Look, we'd just change our conversation, yeah? We're just creating more bad publicity. Yeah, well, maybe he's right. I mean, if we can't afford the rent, maybe the shop wasn't a good idea after all.